All right, so there are a few things that affect how fast or slow a reaction um, takes place. Um, one of them being concentration. We know the concentration, uh, the higher, more concentrated the reactants are, the, more, the faster they're going to collide, uh, the more often they're going to collide. And also the nature of the reactants, how a reactant that particular uh, metal or substance is when it, when it comes across something else. So the, taking those two things into account, um, we're going to actually make uh, mathematical rate laws. And the rate laws are actually unique for each particular reaction. Um, so let's take this reaction, for example. We're going to say A plus B yields products. Notice I don't write my products out, nor do I care what they are. Um, they do not affect how fast or slow the reaction is. This, the, re the reactants are the ones that are very important. So we're going to deal with just those. Okay, so we, um, this is our backbone of our mathematical expression for the rate law. Um, rate equals K times the concentration of, in this case, A, times the concentration of, in this case, B, raised to a certain power. And let's dissect what this actually means. So the rate is going to be um, in units of molarity per unit of time. In this case, we're going to talk about seconds, but it can be any time, minutes or hours or whatever it may be, um, depending on the reaction or how fast or slow it takes place. In this, in this particular instance, it's going to be fast, so I put seconds. If it's slow, you put something like hours or days. Um, this is going to be a rate constant. Um, it's a K. Uh, it's a K value. It's not the same K you're seeing in equilibrium or acid bases when you're dealing with those. It's a lowercase K and it does have units. So you're going to have to express those units. And it actually um, varies with temperature. So this is actually going to happen to have to happen at a certain temperature. The rate law, this particular rate law will change if the temperature is raised or lowered. So this, this thing is dependent, this K is dependent on temperature. This is a concentration of, that bracket means concentration of and molarity moles per liters. So this is the concentration of this reactant, uh, and this is the, the brackets mean the concentration of this particular reactant. And these are raised to a certain power. This is what we call the reaction order. This will tell us how important these guys are in terms of how fast they go. So the higher these numbers, the more important they are in terms of how fast the reaction will take place. Um, they notice, I want to make sure you do note, this is really, really important, that these superscripts Exponents are not the coefficients of in the reactant in the reaction. Okay, so this um, these are only going to take place in we're talking about reaction mechanisms, which uh, there's another video on if you want to take a look at that. But talking about rate laws, um, these these numbers are not going to be the coefficients in the reaction. All right, so um, let's talk about how we can actually find the rate law. So you're going to have to get empirical data, meaning experimental data, to, in order to find the rate law for each reaction. So um, in order the reaction that we originally had which I'll write again, A, A plus B, B yields products. We have two reactants, A and B. So in my, uh, I'm going to have three different trials. I'm going to have three different experiments. Um, in the first experiment, in my first trial, I'm going to put 0.1 moles per liter of A in the same beaker with 0.1 moles per liter of B. And I note that to get to my products, the rate is 2 times 10 to the negative third molarity per second. That's how fast the products are being formed. Then I'm like, okay, I want to see how dependent each one is. Like, do I, if I put more of A in, is the reaction going to go faster? Um, well, I have to check it out. So I made sure B was the same. This is going to be my constant right here. And then I, I doubled the concentration of A, and I noticed my constant, my, the rate actually changed. It increased. Then I did my third trial. This time I'm going to keep A the same, and I'm going to increase the, the rate of B and see how much, how that much that affects the rate law. And so I'm going to use all this information to do the overall rate law for this reaction. So let's do this together. So I remember the rate, the rate law is rate equals K times A to the concentration of M times B to the, to the order of N. So these are going to tell us how much each um, reactant is uh, influencing the rate. So in order to find these guys, um, I have to uh, do this. So you have to take the ratio of two trials. So I'm going to pick trial one and two because B is the same here. So B is unaffected. So I'm just trying to find this guy. So I'm going to see how much it affects it. So if I doubled um, the concentration of A, so it went from uh, 0 0.100 to 0 0.200, what's going to happen to my rate? My rate went from 2 times 10 to the negative third to 4 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, so if I reduce this, this equals 1 half to the M equals one half. In this case, m is one. Okay? So right now I can erase this m and say so I know my m is one. Okay, great. Then I'm going to see what n is. So I need to see how much um, b influences the rate of reaction. So um, I'm going to 
say it's the same thing for B. So I'm going to go, OK. So in this case, A stayed the same here, but B changed. So I'm going to use trials 2 and 3 to compare. So if this concentration of B went from 0.1 to 0.2 um, to some certain power, and the rate chain went from 4 times 10 to the negative third to 16 times 10 to the negative third, what is this? So this is 1 half to the n equals 1 fourth. n is going to equal 2. Okay. This then is going to be 2. These are what we call the orders of reactions. Okay. So B actually influences the rate of reaction more. So if I put more con high, the higher concentration of B, the faster the rate's going to go compared to A. Um, so the overall order of this reaction is the thir a third order reaction. So we're going to call this so 1 plus 2 equals 3. So it's a third order reaction. And this actually um, is not important in this particular simple case, but when you get to AP chemistry and you're talking about integrated rate laws, this third order reaction will tell us a lot of information. But right now we're just going to note that it is a third order reaction because it's 1 plus 2. The first order and second order equals third order. Okay. Um, so right now we know this is our rate law, but we don't. We need to find k because we said k is um, is important and it's a constant for this particular rate law at this temperature. So we have to find that. So um, I am actually going to erase all of this information so I can get more board space. Okay. So to, in order to find this k, I'm just going to pick a trial and plug everything in. So I'm going to make it simple. I'm going to do trial one. So the rate for trial one is 2 times 10 to the negative third equals a k, which we're looking for, times the concentration of A, in this case it's 0.1, to the first power, times the concentration of B, which is point, uh, 0.1 also, squared. And so I solve this. So this is 0.001 times k equals 2 times 10 to the negative third. So if I, find, if I divide by 0.001, Point zero zero one. I get. I find that k is equal to two. The bigger the k, the faster the reaction actually takes place. The smaller the k, the slower the reaction actually takes place. So, um, okay. So then we need to find the units for this guy, because the units actually vary for each rate law. This is, units are going to change. So um, let's do that. So we're going to have to plug in. Um, the rate is in molarity per second. Equals our k times the concentration is in molarity, and it's the first power, times the concentration of molarity to the second power. And I want to get to the overall unit molarity per second. So what is k? Well, then I'm going to say molarity times seconds equals k times m to the third. Okay? And so then I'm going to say that k is equal to uh, 1 over molarity squared times seconds. And let's make sure that works. Uh, molarity over seconds equals 1 over molarity squared times seconds times molarity cubed. This will cross out, giving us molarity per second, so it does check off. Perfect. Okay, there's actually, instead of having to go through this every time, there's actually a simple rule that we can actually take place, um, or a little trick. So the units for K is K is equal to 1 over the molarity times order, I mean to the order exponent, minus 1, I'm sorry, not divided by, times seconds. Now, this seconds is just because we're using our seconds in, um, when dealing with this, but this could be any, whatever unit of time you're dealing with, hours, days, minutes, whatever. We just called it seconds because that's what time we're dealing with. But this is how you can find the rate, the rate without actually, sorry, the units of rate, the rate law without actually having to go through this whole mess of math. Um, okay, so this is essentially how you would use empirical data to determine the rate law and how fast a reaction is going.